1994 is when I started in the HIV field, but um, as um, but what before that I actually, why I decided to get into the field was because I had friends and family that actually had it and I didn't know anything about this strange, weird disease. And I wanted to find out about it. And then of course I heard about Magic Johnson. And I'm like, okay, Magic has it and my friends have it and I just don't know. So I actually went to Austin, um Library and I used to sit there and I used to just kind of like learn and figure out what this disease is and what this thing is. And so I just didn't know, you know, so I just kind of was trying to learn about it. And I was working in a, a psychiatric hospital at the time. And so I also was then learning that some of these patients were having it. And of course it was the thing that, you know, ill, you know, how, how do I touch or talk to these people? You know, what do I do? You know, so I just really wanted to learn it. And I kind of really learned that, you know, you, you know, you have to be a human being. You have to have the compassion and the love to be in this field that you're in. And I definitely enjoy being in this field, you know. And so I wanted to um, bring it to another step. So I actually landed up working in another place called the Guild Home Agent Blind, which was located in Yonkers. And we had a center there called Center for AIDS Care. And I worked there for 15 years there. And I watched hundreds upon hundreds of people die from the disease. And it was a very hard and very difficult. My first few months there, I thought six months was like six years because I just watched death after death after death. And I remember I used to drive home from work and I would have to pull over to the side because I was just burst out crying. Just, can I do this? Can I be in this field? Can I, I just didn't know what to do. But, you know, um, I really felt that I needed to be in this field, that they, you know, a lot of times people always shun them away. I am not positive, um, but people a lot of times treat me like I'm positive because I work in this field. And um, I, you know, said, you know what, I'm not going to be like these other people. And whereas you're a case manager or anything in a different field, you're supposed to have this professional kind of thing and you, you're not supposed to have any real emotions or whatever. And in a field, in this kind of a field, you're a whole completely different individual. And, you know, especially where I worked, I worked basically, it was like a respite, so I watched people die. So I'm not gonna have people dying and I have to be this professional person. You know, I wanted to show them that if maybe their family, because a lot of times the families didn't want anything to do with them. And I wanted them to see that they had at least one person. But landed up where I worked at, they used to call us the dream team because you had a whole group of people that said, we are gonna be your family till the day you die. And I used to love that because we made sure that um, they died peacefully and they died with people loving them. Even though some of the times they were very sick and they landed up being in the hospital, we used to request from the doctor, can you please bring them back to the center? We want them to die here with us. And we made them die with us. Um, and then we used to always do a thing, that was a thing that we all felt that we had to do, that we used to open the window and we let the spirit go free. So that was a, a thing we always used to love to do to um, honor them and know that their life was worth something that you might have been a drug addict, you might have been a prostitute, you might have just did it, you know, on its own, you know, you, you've had sexual encounters. I mean, that's where one of my friends, she literally, you know, she got it from her boyfriend and she didn't realize he had it. He never told her, he knew it, but he didn't tell her. Um, and that's one of the main reasons why I decided to get into that field because of her. And I wanted to learn more how to help her and I didn't know what to do to help. But I just wanted to make sure everybody else didn't feel that stigma that they love to dish out to people with the disease. So that was the thing that made me want to continue going into the field that I, I am in and I continue to enjoy being in. I, well, first of all, it, 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 things have changed a lot from when I first started. 
So the stigma has definitely changed in the sense that, you know, like I said, you want to isolate them. I, I remember uh, we had patients when we used to send them to the hospital and the hospital who you would think had common sense would literally put people in a room all the way down the end of the hallway and isolate them away from everybody else because they had the disease and they um, used to treat them like they were a nobody. And when they would come back to our center, we're like, did you get a shower? No. Did you get this? No. Did you get that? No. They wouldn't get things because people used to treat them that way. So I think a lot of it still continues to be education. But you know what? We've had tons of education. People just don't want to completely hear the message. You know, I mean, a lot of people, when you talk to them, they, they know and they understand what HIV is. And they're like, oh, I know this. I've learned this because schools definitely teach that. I've worked in prisons. Prison teach you that constantly, you know. But, you know, it, it's the message that people, that even though you're giving out the message to people and the education is given out, a lot of people don't want to hear it. I, I used to tell a lot of people when they used to say things to me, I always said, well, you know, you know, you're not really hearing what I have to say. I once said, can I get you a box of Q-tips? Can you clean out your ears so you can hear what I got to say to you? Because you're not hearing it, you know, because a lot of them need to clean out there. They got too much wax in there and not in, in the ears, but in the brain cells. And they just need to clean out and hear and feel the compassion. Because you know what? Any, that anybody would know, if you look within your own family, I bet you, in almost everybody's family, you're going to find at least one person in somebody's family that might be positive. So would you want to treat your family member or anybody else treat your family member the way you're treating somebody else? So I have to put myself into that shoe. I don't want nobody to do that to my family, so I'm not going to do that to yours. So it's, even though it's still the word education for the stigma, you still got a lot of wax in people's ears. I have young kids, and I already um, plan on teaching them about the disease, and you know, um, and again, just teaching them even just the first step for kids in education. Sometimes parents still don't even teach their kids what puberty is. They need to learn all of these things. Teach them the different steps, little by little, when they can understand it. But learning just about themselves, learning about the word sex, as they said back in the days, the birds and the bees. You know, you as a parent, as a parent, you should be able to talk to your kids, let your kids talk back to you because they learn better for you and they be able to trust and say, you know, mommy, you know, some guy in school wanted to touch me. You know, is that okay? You know, sometimes they just don't know or understand. So if you as a parent can just bring it out and then as a school in itself that they should be able to help educate um, the children because you know what? Everybody's learning younger and younger. I've dealt with many teenagers that was born with the disease. What are you supposed to do in school? They're shunning them away again, what like people like to do. So I, I deal with people who are born with the disease. And I've had one individual for a while when, where I used to work at before who was born with it. And because she was so angry about her having the disease, she decided I'm gonna get people back and I'm gonna spread the disease. So she used to go out purposely dating to have sex, to hurt other people. I mean, if you look around now, there's a lot of laws and a lot of different things that happens now, but back when a lot of it was occurring, a lot of things was just falling into place. But she then turned around to be an advocate, and she's, she's gone out to high schools and, and told her story and the anguish that she feels within herself that she's probably in, in her mind is a murderer. And she has to then now deal with that as well upon herself as, you know, too. But, you know, to continue in just, again, just educating people and where people think now it's not going to happen to me. Guess what? You're probably on top of the list if it's going to happen to. That's going to be you because if it's not going to happen to you, it's going to happen to you because if you're not protecting yourself, then you're n it's going to happen, sadly enough. And we don't want that to happen. And you, we have a place like, say, Hutchin River Healthcare, who has, and we have four different sites. We have the Peace Skill site, the Beacon, um, the Poughkeepsie um, Atrium, and the Monticello that we deal, and we have a Genesis program that we try to help people with. 
And I think if you are positive, try to find a center close to you. We have, like I said, we do have our different sites here. If you want to come into one of any of our sites, you have case managers in each site that is very caring and will want the best for you. We have an awesome doctor, Dr. Christine Kerr, who will treat you with the love and respect and, and show, and she's very knowledgeable in her field and will try to help educate you along with the case manager would help educate you into being able to take care of your disease. If you're not um, HIV positive and you want to learn about it, once again, there's plenty of sites all around the area, but again, Hudson River Healthcare, you have people here that's always going to be willing to help you. And we're just always going to be here and we have a heart to want to not see you stigmatized anymore.